Boston, Massachusetts, there is no purer distillation of the Jersey ethos than little Steven Van Zandt. He is his own purest creation, words you will never hear on the street. Wow, that guy looks just like little Steven. <laughs> Roaring into New Jersey at seven years old, baptized at 13 in the Holy Spirit of the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, the Stones on Hollywood Palace, Steve's vocation, rock and roll, chose him early. I first laid eyes on him at the Mid Mid Middletown Hullabaloo Club in 1966. As I walked in there with Steve with his band, The Shadows, knocking out a record perfect rendition of the Turtles' Happy Together. I knew I had just met my black vested, paisley tied, teenage, wild eyed brother. One look at Steve, and I knew that we'd both drunk the same Kool Aid. Then it was fast friendship, weekly trips to Greenwich Village and the Cafe Wa to watch the bands, arguing about who was better, Led Zeppelin or the Jeff Beck group, the Beatles or the Rolling Stones, who had the perfect clothes, the perfect guitar, the perfect hair, and thousands of hours of preparation for the day when folks could argue about us. You know? Of course, this all culminated in our brotherhood, in the E Street Band. Yes. Steve's service, playing, singing, producing as my irreplaceable lieutenant and our lifelong friendship. While I am always blessed to have Steve at my side, his solo work speaks for itself. The incredible songs and productions he created for Southside Johnny, such as I Don't Want to Go Home, Love on the Wrong Side of Town. It's been a long time. Steve is one of the greatest living white soul performers and writers we have. His timely and classic Sun City recording with an organization he created, Artists United Against Apartheid, was not only brave music, but worked hard to combat apartheid in South Africa. His incredible work with his ongoing group, the Disciples of Soul. <laughs> and all of this before you get to Steve's great contribution to Jersey lore as an actor, Silvio in The Sopranos. Did I mention he's a radio host, an entrepreneur with Little Steven's Underground Garage where he plays all the music you need to hear and captains the Wicked Cool record label where he releases great records from, he gives young bands the shot they deserve. Steve also has a long career as an activist, too lengthy to go into here, but let's just say he walks it like he talks it his Rock and Roll Forever Foundation, and its Teach Rock program launched, yes, brings an essential curriculum of music and culture into school and makes it available at no cost to educators. Mm -hmm. At a time of cutbacks in arts funding, Steve's programs are keeping kids engaged in the arts and in school. This is his greatest legacy. To finish off, this is a man who was married to his lovely wife Maureen by Little Richard. <laughs> was serenaded down the aisle by the great Percy Sledge. Is the sole creator of the male babushka and is the only man I know besides you, Hefner, who has figured out how to spend his whole life in his pajamas. <laughs> Let's go to the video. Steve Van Zandt, also known as Little Steven or Miami Steve, is a musician, actor, and member of the legendary E Street Band. He is also known for his roles on television dramas, including The Sopranos and Lilyhammer and hosts Underground Garage Radio on Sirius XM. 
Stephen's family moved to Middle Township when he was just seven. He attended Middletown High School, where he was kicked out for having long hair, but he went back to school to make his mother happy, and he graduated in 1968. With Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, he helped popularize the Jersey Shore sound and released dozens of hits. Since the 1980s, he has performed with his own solo band, Little Steven and the Disciples of Soul. In 2014, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a member of the E Street Band, citing improvisational skill that has thrilled audiences for more than 40 years. In May of 2017, Stephen received an honorary degree from Rutgers University and addressed the largest ever graduating class. Tonight, we bestow another honor as we add him to the New Jersey Hall of Fame. I love you, Steve. Welcome to the New Jersey Hall of Fame, Stephen Van Zandt. Nice, nice, nice. So destiny is a funny thing. You know, like Bruce was saying, when and, when and where you're born and the circumstances you're born into really count. If I had been born 10 years earlier, I probably would have been a teenage juvenile delinquent car mechanic drag racing my car every weekend, and I'd be dead now. And if my mother didn't marry Bill Van Zant, I never would have left Boston and ended up in New Jersey. Growing up in New Jersey ended, ended up being a very good thing. It was less pressure than a major city, so... Uh, you had a chance to develop. At the same time, uh, it wasn't so great that it made you want to stay there the rest of your life. So it gave you some motivation, you know? Like, <laughs> like I said at, uh, at, at, at Rutgers, uh, uh, you know, my life has really been about chasing greatness. I, I, I seek it out, I support it, and, and when I find it, and uh, I create it when I can. But uh, I wouldn't have known what greatness was if I hadn't grown up in the middle of a Renaissance period when the greatest art being made was also the most commercial. You know? And uh, that, 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 that set your standards very high forever. So we were lucky to grow up when we did. Uh, as I've said many times, nobody's born great. Greatness is developed. And being born when our country was so rich that it allowed uh, a teenage leisure class to exist uh, and gave it time to develop, was very lucky. And uh, the suburbs of New Jersey in the 60s was the perfect place to do it. So destiny and a little bit of luck goes a long way. And most importantly, if I hadn't been in New Jersey in the 60s, exactly where I was, doing what I happened to be doing in the manner I was doing it, I never would have met Bruce Springsteen. Now, we've done a lot of good work together, and still more to come. <laughs> but what was most important, what was most important was he was the only other person I have ever met to whom, for whom, rock and roll was everything. Not a job, not a convenience, not a way to fortune and fame, not a way to get laid, <laughs> although it would be all those things. <laughs> but you have to understand, when we decided to do it, it wasn't a legitimate business yet. And the only successful bands were from England, 3,000 miles away, not New Jersey, you know. So we needed each other's uh, reinforcement, you know? And with Bruce and the E Street Band, we would do what only a few had accomplished in history before us. We did the impossible. We made New Jersey hip. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then 20 years later, I had the most extraordinary and unlikely fate of watching New Jersey become fashionable twice in one lifetime. Unbelievable, you know, because if I hadn't been in New Jersey, I wouldn't have met David Chase or been in The Sopranos, so. So it all depends on where you are, you know? 
right timing. So thank you, New Jersey. Uh, you have been very, very good to me. And I hope someday, if my luck holds out, to eventually return the favor. Thank you, Steve Edwards. Thank you, Carol Ross. Thank you, Maureen, I love you, baby. Thank you, Bruce, I love you. Thank you.